The invention of the electric hair clipper in 1919 was sheer progress. It was the first clipper with a motor in the actual unit, allowing the barber to cut hair at a very steady clip. Hairstyles change, but the electric clipper motors along, always on the cutting edge. Hair is definitely a growth industry, so these early electric hair clippers were an easy sell. These days, they make the casing for hair clippers out of heavy-duty plastic. An automated mold melts and shapes the plastic material into casing parts. A robot picks up brass contacts and places them in fixtures. Another robot then attaches a plastic switch to each contact. A blast of air sends the assembled piece to a bin. Here, a robot slides a plastic spool onto a mandrel, then anchors copper wire to it. They wind the wire around the spool more than 2,000 times to make part of the electric relay that will drive the blades. Pulleys keep the wire feed at an even tension. Next, robots work on the clipper's lower casing. One installs a blade slide for adjusting the blade, and another picks up a lever to engage the slide. The robot attaches the lever to the case and blade slide. And an automated screwdriver fastens everything together. Another robot then sends the clipper assembly on its way to have a metal arm placed inside. It'll move the cutting blade, and for that, it will need a couple of springs. They slide the switch assembly into position, and then screw the arm into place. They install a screw for adjusting the power setting. And now, they fit the copper wire coil in the lower housing, where it will drive that metal arm. To activate it with the flick of the switch, they run a power cord from the switch to the coil. Over at another station, a punch press stamps out blades for the clippers. The blades are toothless to start. They're not sharp enough yet to cut it in the barber shop. So after a good wash and heat treatment, they head over to another station to get some teeth. A worker pops a blade into a fixture to hold it steady, while a jagged cylindrical cutter carves the teeth. Coolant keeps things from heating up and compromising the integrity of the steel as the cutter does its work. Each hair clipper has two blades, one with cutting teeth that moves over a larger stationary blade, which ensnares the hairs so they can be cut. Next, they print the company logo on the clipper's lid. And they attach the lid to the casing that holds the electrical components. They mount the blades on the head of the clipper for that double-edged cutting action. And finally, they tune each clipper for optimum performance by adjusting that power screw installed earlier. The clippers come in a kit. This one will be sold for consumer use, for those who want to try their hand at a little home grooming. Now these electric hair clippers are ready to make any bad hair day better. And with those toothy blades, they'll definitely make short work of any hair challenge.
The nail clipper was invented in 1896 in the United States, and soon it was at everyone's fingertips. By 1902, ads marketed it as the gem, and it was sold by the dozen for $2 in U.S. currency. As an alternative to scissors, it was an idea that just clicked. More than a century after its invention, the nail clipper is still behind many a well-groomed hand. Its popularity numbers in the millions, and no manicure set would be complete without one. Production begins with this elaborate die. It's about a meter in length and it has 12 different shaped openings. Hydraulic machinery repeatedly forces a steel sheet through the various openings as the sheet moves forward. With each stroke, the parts look more like nail clipper jaws. The clipping edge starts out straight and blunt and gradually becomes concave. The machinery also cuts and shapes the holes for assembling the nail clippers. In just one minute, a total of 80 strokes generate a dozen nail clipper jaws. Here, the clipper jaws vibrate with abrasive stones and organic acid for up to 20 hours. This gentle polishing makes the parts gleam, but doesn't ruin the edges and contours. At the next station, a worker aligns pairs of clipper jaws for assembly. Using a mechanical press, he drives a rivet into the hole at the gripping end of the jaws. He flips the assembled clipper jaws over, inserts the other half of the rivet, and then presses the two tightly together. The rivet locks the gripping end of the nail clippers together so that the two jaws can't be twisted apart. Next, a worker smooths the edges of the clipper's gripping end against an abrasive wheel. This grinding evens out any irregularities and makes the two clipper jaws appear as one at the gripping end. Attention now turns to the cutting end of the clippers. After locking them in a device, a worker grinds the concave edges until they match up. These nail clipper jaws are now ready for the lever, but the lever itself still needs some work. Using a little press, they make a hole and an indentation between its two prongs, allowing the lever to sit more comfortably on the clipper. Levers are then fed one at a time to a set of drills that carve little holes into the prongs of the fork. The holes are just big enough for a pin that's 1.3 millimeters in diameter. Here's the view from the side, before and after drilling. A worker now inserts a bolt in the cutting end of the clipper jaws. This bolt has a little hole in the end of it. He presses the jaws together, and it's now time to attach the lever. He inserts the pin in the holes in the lever and the bolt. He pinches the pin with pliers to secure it and the lever now pivots freely on the cutting jaws. All the pieces of the nail clipper have come together, but the assembly processes have left oil and other residues on this tool. It's time for a cleaning in a special tub. Sound waves keep the water moving to distribute the soap and scrub them clean. Once they dry, a worker uses a combination of acid and positive electrodes to etch the company name and item number onto the nail clipper. The next employee sands the cutting edges to sharpen them. It takes skill and practice to get them just right. He holds the nail clipper to a light and scrutinizes the alignment of the jaws as he opens and closes them. This cardboard test confirms that these nail clippers are up to the job. From a blunt clipper on the left to a really sharp tool on the right, what a difference the sanding has made. The lever swivels for various clipping angles and then folds down neatly when not in use. It takes 11 people to manufacture 100 of these clippers an hour, and that means they've been working at a very fast clip.